Open Dr. Racket. Make sure that you're using the language declared at source and that that language is indeed the Racket language. Type F5 in order to read in the definitions and then Control D to give you all the real estate for the interactions pane. Let's make a small list. Lists can contain various elements. Notice the short form with the apostrophe in front of the left paren. I can name this list for later use. I want to call it L1. Now every time I type L1 I get my list. I can name another list. It doesn't matter if it shares some elements with L1. Now I've got two lists to play with. I can append one to the other and I get the appended lists. I can apply an operation to all the elements of the list at once. Here I add them all. I can apply multiplication to all the numbers from 1 through 4 and get their product. I can generate a new list by applying some expression to each element in turn. I name each element n and then what do I decide to do with n? I'm going to add 3 to n. So my new list increases each element by 3. I can do the same trick again, name each element n, and instead of adding 3, I can square each element. Sometimes lists are a little bit too deeply nested. Here's some way that we can flatten them. I'm going to define a function called list elements. If it turns out that I'm applying this to something that isn't a list, well, I just list that thing itself, but I better spell list correctly. If I'm applying it to something that is indeed a list, I use the second option. I name each part of the list E. I used list elements on E itself, so I'll get a bunch of smaller lists. And now I need to gather those smaller lists together. Well, I can simply apply append. So I'll get one big list of all the elements. Let's think this through by looking at what it does from small cases. So if I use list elements on just a single element, well, I rename x to be that thing. I use the first option and I produce a list containing that element. What if I use list elements on something that's already a list? Well, now my definition says I better use the second option. I'm going to append some sublists. How do I make those sublists? Well, I use list elements on each part of the list. So I'm going to create a list containing one, and then I'm going to append that, and I'm going to get something very much like what I started with. Not too cool so far, but look what happens if I get some nesting. Here's a list that has a simple element, two but it has a sublist, the list containing one. We use the second option since we're dealing with a list. We are going to use list elements in each part. We know what it does to a single element. It makes a list containing that element. And if the element is a list itself, it's going to make that list, gathers them together into the list 2-1. What if I nest it even more deeply? So here we've got a two-element list. The first part is three. The second part is nested. Again, we use the second option. We're going to take each of the two parts, use list elements on them. That'll produce sublists, the list containing three and the list containing two, one. And then we append those into the list three, two, one. We can make this pretty much as complicated a list structure as we like and it will always flatten it out into a list of elements.